relations, marketing, and social media and healthcare requires making the right moves at the right time. Welcome to the Overrated and Underused Show. Here's your host, experienced marketers Jen Jennings and Tom Testa, with special guest Adrian Stoner. Overrated and underused. Welcome to the latest episode of Overrated and Underused. I'm Tom, along with Jen. And Jen, during today's episode, we're going to talk about the wonderful world of SEO, or search engine optimization. And I'm already exhausted just thinking about it. (laughs) All these acronyms. I know. PPC, SEO, we're full of them during this episode. But I don't know. I think this is one where... You know, search engine optimization, and we'll get into it. It's something that's, I think, uh, on the minds of a lot of folks, especially on the marketing front. Everyone wants to drive traffic, and you know, there's many components to SEO, and we're going to get into some of those, and maybe some of the underused and overrated aspects of it as well. But I think this is going to be kind of a different conversation. We're not going to get technical, but I feel SEO is a kind of a technical thing. Yes. So SEO is definitely a very specialized kind of marketing niche, mm-hmm. so to speak. I mean, there's very specific SEO consultants and SEO agencies that a lot of companies work with. And those are great. So just to preface this by saying that we are not one of those SEO specific agencies. So while we do have great backgrounds in this, it's not our core business. It's just something that we help our clients navigate as far as a holistic kind of marketing program and make our recommendations based on some of those. Exactly. I think there are certain aspects of SEO that our agency does a great job with. And then there is the list of SEO tactics can kind of get long in some way. And, you know, I think that's where, like Jennifer, you said, you know, it's good to maybe turn to other resources, experts in the field. But I think a lot of people think they know what SEO is, but there's a lot to go into it. And that's something I hope that we can explore today. You know, we're not trying to say that if you think you're an expert, you're not. But I think SEO is a little bigger than maybe what a lot of the folks out there think it is. You know, because I think they think, oh, search engine, back up a little bit. We know what search engines are. We know that I think at the basic level, people think, yes, when I type in a keyword, I'd like to know that when I type that into Google or Bing or, you know, Yahoo, whatever we use for a a search engine, that... Let's let's stop right here. Nobody's using Yahoo. All right. Well, uh, what are you saying? Like the 90s called and they'd like Yahoo back? (laughs) (laughs) Ah. But at the basic level, I think that's, I think what everyone hopes is that they're working things on the back end when it comes to SEO so that when you're going to type in certain keywords that ideally that traffic is driven to your website. Yeah. So I'm going to go out on the limb and come from the mindset to where I am saying that SEO feels overrated to me. Overrated. And I say that because often the people that I'm talking to companies that are wanting to promote their businesses and bring up SEO really don't understand it. They've just kind of heard that phrase thrown around. Oh, it's a hot term. We, we need to be focused on SEO and don't really understand what that means or that their website, if it's built well, and they have a great content plan and they're putting good content out there. They have a PR program that's getting their name mentioned in news articles and their names popping up, you know, in these search engines through other marketing efforts. So the SEO feels like, you know, and this has probably been going back probably a decade where we just talk about how there's been a lot of hype around it. And I'm not trying to negate that. I do think it's worthwhile endeavor and and a business, but I think a lot of companies say, oh, well, I'm going to throw some meta tags in my pictures and this is great SEO strategies. Like let's focus on this and really Mm -hmm. don't look at like the larger scope of the content and the things that they're producing on their website that really all goes into SEO because yeah, there's tips and tricks and there's understanding, you know, how the search engines and the algorithms kind of work. I mean, I guess everybody doesn't know exactly how they work, but like, you know, there's, there's keeping up with the updates and, and processes. There's a lot that's involved in SEO for sure from the strategy side, but you know, it's something that takes time. And so I think it's just a long range program versus kind of one of those, those quick fix type of things. But I, I think the term to me feels like it has a lot of hype behind it. And I don't think it's like, 
something that's going to produce immediate results, but I do think it's something that should be a part of a program, a marketing. Right. Yeah, no, it's still very important. Like you're saying, it might be a hype term and, and maybe not everyone knows the deepest details of what goes into SEO, but at, at the highest level, a lot of folks know that it helps drive traffic through search engines. And that's very important. And it's a, maybe more organic. Then on the other side of things, you have pay-per-clicks, right? That's the same yeah. thing. You're paying for those search engine searches. I would say that neither SEO or pay-per-click is free. So I think, you know, SEO experts get to say, you know, SEO takes time, takes money, takes expertise. So if you want it done well, you're going to have to pay for it, whether you're paying like an in-house SEO manager or you're paying an outside consulting firm or an SEO expert, you're paying somebody that kind of has that expertise in it to, to manage it. You're not paying the search engines more or less, but you're paying for the strategy. So there are two different components, but yeah, a lot of people look at it as we do call it like organic. So there's the organic search, but I think building up a good program of the content and, and stuff isn't necessarily free. If you're hiring a, an agency to do this or an outside consultant to do it, certainly it's not free. I was thinking more, I guess, along the lines of if you're a, a hospital and, and you have, a, you know, a web team or something like that, that's where I was thinking more, more organic, less paid. Because maybe those folks are probably more more knowledgeable on the SEO front. They may be doing things on the back end of your organization's website and things like that versus throwing money into a paid campaign or a pay-per-click. But then again, maybe a lot of hospitals aren't looking to drive paid stuff to their, their website through pay-per-click. That might not be as critical as, as something for maybe a vendor. I mean, I would say practices probably, like especially if you're in a competitive market. Certainly, you know, if you're a dermatology practice or you're you know, a pediatrician, like, I mean, people are searching. So like 90 plus percent of online experiences begin with a search engine. I Google, I don't Yahoo, something probably 20 times a day, if not more. And that's probably outside of work too. It's like, if you have a question about anything in life these days, I feel like, you know, everybody's initial reaction is to go search for it. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I, I think especially probably even more so on like the local level for practices and SEO has dramatically changed, you know, when Google kind of changed, but I guess this was several years ago. I know Google changed a lot of its algorithms to prioritize local businesses within a like close proximity to whoever's searching. So that really changed the game for a lot of like national brands and things like that. But it helped out, you know, if I'm looking for best chiropractor near me, or it's going to be actual chiropractors near me. So it's... It's going to be location-based. Yes. Anyways, I think there's so many different approaches to SEO, but I, I do think basics will get you pretty far, but it also comes down to website optimization. So those kind of go hand in hand and... You know, you really want to make sure you have a mobile friendly website because a lot of searches happen on mobile devices versus desktop. So I think those type of things are are important. A content strategy, publishing relevant content, targeting keywords. You know, as marketers, when we're looking at content and developing content for our clients, you know, there's a lot of like in the know type of like industry phrases that you use, but may not be something that the end user, the consumer, the person searching for your product is going to call it. You've got to think of, you know, somebody's just looking for a solution to their problem. So whatever it is. So if it's document sharing product, which is probably not something you would put on your website, you wouldn't say this is a document sharing product. Everybody wants to say, oh, this is the premier document management platform and and all the things. But, you know, and this kind of goes for SEO and more into pay-per-click or cost-per-click or paid search or search ads or whatever you want to call it. You know, there's so many different phrases, but we're all kind of saying the same terms under search engine marketing. So, I think the keywords are important. So maybe that phrase isn't what you flash across the top of your homepage, but if that is something that you think is a high search term for your audience, that's probably something you could work into blog posts or other areas throughout your site so that there is that ranking and that presence for those, that content. 
like you said too, I think it all your keywords will all you know have to cover the span of several different stakeholders, right? Like you said, I think you may have those who are more technical who are interested in your product, then there are those who are less technical, maybe more of the consumer side, and not to say consumers don't know the technical speak around things and need it in more plain English. But yeah, no, I think having relevant keywords that the different stakeholders would search for, so there'd be more technical stuff versus more not so technical stuff, depending on who the the stakeholder is, the target audience is. And those are the keywords that, like you said, you'll be using across your website. Maybe your blog post will be using different language. The articles you develop may be using different keywords. The social media posts you pull together could be using different keywords as well. I think in general, and I know this is a big part of SEO, but keyword research and development, I think is a great exercise as well, because it helps across many other platforms like we just discussed too, just getting to know those keywords, making sure you're using them consistently across all your platforms, not just for SEO, but just in general, because they're searchable terms that people are looking for. Well, let's jump into pay-per-click. Pay-per-click. Who doesn't love a good pay-per-click campaign? Jennifer, talk to me about pay-per-click. Are you done with PPC? Yeah, you know me. (laughs) PPC, another one of these acronyms. We threw SEO around, now we're throwing PPC around. Talk to us. Pay-per-click, overrated. PPC. Yeah, overrated, underused. What are they? Is underused. Underused. Underused? Uh, Every time I go to a website and type something, I am flooded with ads. Do you click on the ads? Of course not. Why would I click on that? Well, I don't know how relevant they are. You know, I mean, still, I'm looking for something. I know what I'm looking for. So how is that going to help me? Pay per click is exactly what it says. (laughs) You essentially pay Google to show your ads at the top or sidebar along with search results. So basically each advertiser is paying every time a user clicks on their ad in the search results. So I think these strategies are underused, not to say that, hey, there's not ads out there, but I do think, you know, when it comes to marketing and healthcare across the board, I think for vendors and practices and, you know, all the kind of ancillary areas of healthcare, especially, you know, if you're in a, a competitive market or just in a space that's the topic is oversaturated. If you're not showing up organically on the first page of results, then yeah, it's it's definitely a worthwhile investment to to buy your way there because most people don't click past the first page. I mean, I would say more than half of people do not click past the first page in their searches. And maybe it's a very relevant keyword for your audience, your target market, certainly putting in competitive bidding strategies and trying different ad campaigns. I think that's a worthwhile investment. So you know, I've said SEO is overrated and pay-per-click is underused. I think they're both together valuable in that I think they bring in different types of traffic, whereas you can build the organic SEO strategy with your content and the, the things you're producing across your website and all this you can do there and then fill in the gaps with a solid search engine advertising campaign to really hit the market in more saturated areas. So yeah, we're talking a lot about PPC. We're talking about it as we talk about SEO, but I think, and, you know, jump in, correct me if I'm wrong here, Jen. I think a lot of the times we often talk about PPC with clients as part of their, their paid campaigns. Not that we don't separate it from SEO, but I think a lot of times, like you talked about, we talk about PPC with other digital ads campaigns with sometimes it's paid social media marketing And then PPC kind of falls into that. And I feel that's kind of, like I said, part of each strategy, it sounds like SEO, but also your paid advertising strategy as well. Yeah, that's where the acronyms and their definitions behind them kind of get a little vague because, you know, some people look at search engine marketing. Some people say that as the term of a paid search marketing component when search engine marketing is really kind of everything. So that's SEO, that's PP. See, pay-per-click. Right. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Overrated and Underused on Healthcare Now Radio. In today's episode, we're exploring SEO or search engine optimization. And Jennifer, we talked uh, in the first half of the show about some of the techniques and maybe why or why not SEO is overrated or, or underused. 
But I think, Jen, to get back to business at hand before we get into Physician's Corner, an underused component of SEO and pay-per-click and everything is the education of it all. Underused. Getting educated, reading up on things. I think there are a lot of people who might think they're SEO experts, and I'm sure you're doing a really great job at it. You know, as we round, close out the segment, maybe we talk a little bit about some of the resources out there. Give listeners actually helpful links and information to actually go and learn something about SEO. And everyone's going to have their own resources, and there's probably SEO experts maybe within your organization. Or, But, you know, a couple of places that I think are really good resources for folks to kind of, you know, get the basics about SEO and trends around SEO and whatnot. We have no affiliation with any of these organizations. They're just resources you can find on your own. But one is Search Engine Journal. That's a real good one, I think. Again, it's an online journal. It's a place where a lot of folks, again, can learn about the latest trends, tactics. I think they have webinars as well. So there's some sort of you know education component to that as well. So I think Search Engine Journal is a good one. And for those, I think a, a little bit more technical too, there's things like the Google Webmaster Central blog as well. Clinician's Corner. So obviously we've talked about, you know, SEO and, and pay-per-click very briefly touching on the, the overall sense. There's a lot that we could dive into and in specifics, but we're, we're very limited on time. But when it comes to, you know, I touched on this earlier with when you're talking about local businesses and when you're trying to reach an audience that's within a radius of you. So this is, you know, physician practices, hospitals, you know, really any local businesses, you know, SEO and pay-per-click is important strategies to have. So obviously making sure, you know, SEO and the content in your website, making sure that you're bringing in those organic searchers to your website. And then once you have them there, having the content and, um, you know, and a user-friendly navigatable website so that you can convert them into, you know, contacting you really helps to build your brand and exposure to people that are looking, actively looking for your product, for your business. And we know a lot of folks in, in practices, physician practices, specialty practices, they're, they're smaller, you know, they, they don't have a large team. They have a small team and most of them are, are dedicated to, of course, you know, taking care of patients. And, you know, there's some administrative folks as well who help make sure the operation is run smoothly. So I think there are some things that a smaller practice could do if they are interested in some sort of SEO campaign. It can be something as basic as, you know, I talked about some tools earlier in all seriousness, you know, they could use some of the tools out there for keyword search, even just to make sure that keywords or how they're how their website ranks and things like that. And, and there are there are certain ones like the Moz.coms of the world or SEM rushes. I remember, you know, even from my days way back when of doing some keyword search. And I think that those are some good resources that, and I believe they're both free. You know, you have to set up an account or something like that, but I think they're Nothing pretty- free, Tom. Nothing is free in life. Well, overrated are things that aren't free. That's what I'm going to say that you tell you right now. But yeah, I think they could they can do some some simple keyword search and website ranking resource tools, things like that, to see where they rank in their area with, with certain search terms and and their website and, and things like that. Yes. So in summary, we don't usually have summaries for our episode, but I feel like this one warrants it. Very formal. It does. Gone, I think SEO is definitely still one of the really important digital marketing strategies that companies should focus on to really drive those long-term kind of results. And then pay-per-click, I think is great. They're kind of a great tool to, to grow a customer base. And especially in areas that are oversaturated keywords, markets that you really want to break into that maybe you don't have the organic rankings, you don't have, you know, the website kind of built up there yet. So if you're trying to not wait out that long-term strategy, I think having both certainly make sense for most businesses. I agree. But then the, the question we always get is, what should my budget be for pay-per-click? So yeah. there's no standard answer for any of that. I think you, you really have to evaluate the keywords that make the most sense for your company, then look at kind of what a competitive bid for those are. But Google Ads makes it super easy. But I say that to say, like, you can't just expect to set up a, a pay-per-click campaign and then leave it and not, you know, it's right. something that has to continually be managed and optimized so that you're not 
wasting your dollars so that you're getting the best use of those funds and you're getting the most clicks. So I, I think the bottom line is, you know, you don't have to be a large hospital or health system to do some really good SEO and pay-per-click stuff. So there is a program in some form for even a smaller practice, a smaller local practice or specialty practice. And again, it might be more important in some way, like you said. I mean, we talked early on the show how you gave the example of I'm looking for a Boston area chiropractor. And, you know, there could be a, it could be a competitive market. There could be 100 chiropractors in the Boston area. And, and maybe you want to do certain things through SEO or through a pay-per-click campaign to help get you to your practice, your, your chiropractic specialty at the top of the search as people look for that, too. And then you get a bunch of whole other things that we're not going to talk about today, like, you know, then reviews and things like that. <gasps> reviews, oh my gosh, you know, things like that that come into play too. So people see it. And then when they, when they see you're at the top, you also want to have some of the other goods to back it up too, you know, because people just see that and then I just say, well, I guess it's a paid search. Well, gee, may as well go to this one. You know, you got to have the goods to back it up as well. Before we wrap up, I, time for a tease alert. Okay. Because next episode... So we talked about SEO, got that all out of our system. But next episode, we're going to be in May 2021, of course. And I think we're going to be talking a little bit about healthcare industry events, virtual events, excuse me. I have to specify that these days because, you know, nobody's really having the in-person events. So all the events are virtual. At least Seems currently. that way. <laughs> Seems that way. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting episode because, again, we will have been about 15 months into the pandemic care when things were starting to really just curtail and, and there, there was no more in-person stuff. So I think it's going to be a great episode. I mean, obviously a lot has changed since last, let's even say March of 2020 to what'll be May of 2021. As the industry looks to get back in shape in terms of in-person events, we all want to see each other, but still kind of hanging back and staying safe in a bunch of areas. But anyway, I think it'll be a good episode to talk about virtual events, where we are, where we're going as we forge ahead. Yeah, it'll be a great one. You know, I think we've all been in a number of virtual events in the last year, probably more than we care to yeah. attend it. There was the Zoom fatigue. There's the, you know, virtual event fatigue that's kind of set in at different points for different people. Right. But and I think what we're looking to talk about next episode is kind of the intricacies of how these different events have been put on. And because there's everything from a simple webinar, you know, go to webinar up to very virtual reality type experiences of trade show booths and, and things like that. So, and everything in between. So I feel like no two events are, have been the same in the last yeah. year. So I, th I think we're really going to kind of dive into our takes on virtual events because yeah. it is something that, you know, I think it's still going to continue throughout 2021. I think it's going to be a great episode, a great discussion. Who knows where it'll go, Joe? All that to say, thank you to our listeners for joining us today as we talk through SEO and pay-per-click. We are sponsored by Anderson Interactive and can be heard weekdays at 10 a.m., 6 p.m., and 2 a.m. Eastern on Healthcare Now Radio. You can email us at hello at Anderson I, that's the letter I, dot com, or tweet us at Jen underscore Jennings or Tom underscore Testa, and follow us with the hashtag over under radio. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the overrated and underused show with your host, experienced marketers, Jen Jennings and Tom Testa and special guest, Adrian Stoner.